Why are silver linings sometimes a bad thing? So as coaches, as helper, as someone who is looking for the silver lining, you want to listen to this video because your well-meaning intention may not be the best thing uh, here. So indeed, in the world of the study of the successful NLP, we believe in reframing. The therapist believes in cognitive reappraisal. But this study has come out and that shows that we're well, at least half wrong. <laughs> so, okay. So what they did is they first gave everyone a survey and I wanted to measure uh, everybody in this uh, experiment, they wanted to measure how much someone was in well-being or how much someone was in ill-being. So you look for uh, positive emotions, engagement and flow, uh, being in the zone, or positive relationship, meaning and purpose, achievement and accomplishment. If you watched any of the other videos on this channel, you know that that is PERMA, which means the scientific definition of well-being. And of course, you also have in a study people in extreme ill-being and everything in between. And so they found out something very interesting. It turns out that people in well-being are really better off looking for the silver lining in a situation that they cannot control. Things like the weather, things like the rules that a government uh, institutes during a global pandemic or something like that. So to look for the silver linings in situations that you cannot control. However, in situations that you can control, it turns out that it's better to actually not look for the silver lining, to actually feel this negative emotion. And from my, I guess, caveman point of view, that completely makes sense. Why is that? Well, what are negative emotions in essence biologically for? A negative emotion or even stress is actually meant to shake us, to wake us up, to go, hey, you need to go do something about this bad situation, this pain impulse, so you can move towards pleasure and away from pain to remove the pain impulse. And that then propels us into, into action. It propels us to get stuff done, to, to step into a place of change and evolution. So that's in a situation where you can control. And that is also for people who are in well-being. They actually found that the opposite was true for the people in ill-being. So basically in uncontrollable situations, to just feel the negative emotion and in controlled uh, in, in, in the situations that they could control to feel positive information. Now, in this research, I couldn't really find why, uh, find out why, but I assume that when you can control and you actually find the silver lining and the positive emotions, it allows for actually a positive emotion to occur and positive emotions make us more flexible make us more capable of seeing other options and solutions. And then it makes logical sense that when we can control it and we can actually create a positive emotion where we otherwise feel in well-being, we actually start solving our problems. We start taking control. So really let this sink in for you because as a well-meaning friend or a coach or, or whatever it is, a therapist, you want to sort of go, huh. So basically when I work with clients or when I work on my own brain, you kind of need to know, well, is someone in well-being or ill-being? And that helps you determine whether or not you should do your silver linings exercises reframes in NLP. By the way, if you're interested in, study, interested in studying NLP, you can study NLP with me online, on Bali, in Los Angeles, in Amsterdam, in Mexico, sometimes in Miami. So definitely visit the website or send me a message. And so you want to be careful what you do here, right? And to, to really uh, step into a place, then how do you then motivate? What language do you use? And I, in my opinion, I cannot take a coach or a therapist seriously if they have, haven't been trained in NLP and with that, the language skills that come with NLP. So that is a little uh, info on the latest scientific research on silver linings.